This tub is my gorgeous bedspread in progress. I'm making a wonky triangle block that's one of my favorites and I just wanted this sweet look. So here are the blocks all done. And I'm going to show you by making a baby quilt with you how to make these blocks. And then I'm going to show you my bedspread made from these blocks. It's so beautiful. It's exactly the tones and the feelings that I wanted it to be. It's just the best. This is my pinks. This is how I keep my scraps. I cut all of these three and a half inch squares from the pink scrap box. So here they are ready to be the base for this block that we're gonna make. And this block's so fun because this, these are my crumbs and they're just the little corner pieces and little tiny stuff and it uses them up. It's a great way to use your crumb pieces of fabric. So I decided pink and teal and I just want to demo how to sew it together. You have to make sure that the corner is going to be covered. So that's me showing you a way to do that. And you just want triangles. You want them to go all the directions. So when you're done, it will be a big variety of wonky, uneven triangles. And that look ends up so appealing to your eye. When you're using a strip, this is how you do it. And I was trying to get different backgrounds with different corners. So that's why I'm choosing other pinks. So you just make a corner and you can see the corner. You have to be able to gauge if there's enough fabric to cover that corner after your seam is sewn. And you get really good at that after a while. So if you goof a time or two, don't worry. When I have a bigger piece, I'll put it on diagonal so that I have a diagonal. I want to save every smidgen of this beautiful fabric because you know it costs me money and I want to use it to make beauty. So here we go, the fat side of the corner is going to be the fat, fat side of the triangle and then as it's skinny it goes up. You get, again, really good at your brain. It's like a puzzle, but your brain knows what to do. And then some are just little tiny triangles. Wait till you see the finished product. You will want to make five of these. I think this is like the fifth or sixth one I've made. I've never made one as big as my bedspread that I'm also going to show you on here and that took lots of work. If you don't want to use smaller blocks, this block can be made in bigger sizes but I love the little blocks so these are three and a half inch squares with the little wonky corners when you're doing it from the strip this is how I press it you press it out stay press it and then open them all up all three at once and I'm going to show you if you don't want to do this with a rotary cutter you can you use your scissors like this these are the only ones I do this with I usually use my rotary cutter trimming it to size if you don't want the back of it you can cut that little corner off I don't generally do that I'm just showing you you can I go for the fast fast method so these are the only two that I cut the backs off I'll show you on this third one that I leave the back on. That's how I usually do it. And I trimmed the rest of the blocks at the cutting table with my rotary cutter and my square to square them up. Once all the blocks are made, you get to have the fun. Go to your design wall, or in my case, design floor, and start laying out your quilt. I use some really strong pinks for my background, as well as some really dark teals. So I'm balancing the teals and the pinks as I lay these out. You can see the pile beside me as I go. I just want there to be a sense of balance. So this is one of those, there's not a right, there's not a wrong, and some people would not lay it out. They would just start sewing them together. But I'm a little bit of a control freak and I need to see where they're going and I lay it out. And once I have it laid out, then I get my numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, however many rows I have. And then I get ready to pin those on so that I can keep track of even rows, odd rows, and know which row goes where. So one is always at the bottom for me and the larger numbers are at the top. I pin these together because as we know, if I don't, I will get them confused upside and backwards. If you don't need to do that, yay for you. Don't do it, but I have to. After I get them pinned in rows, then I just pile them on top of each other. And it doesn't really matter if you sew them in order because I'm going to sew the, all the rows together before I start sewing them as rows together anyway. This is the trick I use when I have really long rows. I do somewhere towards the end, then I go three or four in so that I don't have to fight the blocks on my machine. And then you can see I just pick again and I line them up always after I take the pin out. So I sew them and then I trim and clip and I just 
just do one row at a time until they're completely done. And generally this works out really well for me. I'm able to reach every seam when the row is long enough. So if you haven't ever tried this, try it. Again, it's like a little fun little puzzle. Which one can I do? Can I come out right? If not, you can always grab another row and start it. But this is how I do it. And you can see it just goes together really fast. And pretty soon the row is done and you're ready to move on and do the next row. After I get them all done, I divide them into odds and evens because I'm going to press them. I'm going to press the odds away from the odd, as you'll recall if you've seen other videos. Run from the odd food, run from the odd stuff. So I go away from the odd, and that way all of my odd rows are pressed in that direction away from the number and then they're going to be lined up ready to sew when it's time to put them together when i get to my even rows we all want to be even keel at least i do so we go towards even numbers so i press towards the number and that's how i get my rows to line up that's the little trick so away from the odd and towards the even and because I do this every single time I'm never confused and that way my pressed lines go the direction I need them to go so that it will all work out here are my pressed rows the odds going away the evens going toward and they're ready to sew together so that we can make our quilt you line them up make sure you put the right place in the right place you don't want to sew it upside down one on bottom two next and it's just going to go up from there and you sew these rows together and as you have your intersections lock into place they make beautiful beautiful intersections because you've pressed it correctly so you just budge them together push them where they go, pull them where they go. You don't really push or pull anything, but kind of. You just let them lock in and it makes for a beautiful quilt. I'm going to press these wrong right in front of you. See how I'm pressing towards the triangle? I change my mind and I start pressing the other way because it's less bulk. So after they were all pressed, you can see I just sewed the rows together and then look how beautiful i added a border i put it with minky on the back so that this can love a grandchild and it's just this i actually even used wool batting this is the yummiest cuddliest quilt ever and it's just so beautiful i love that you can use your your little crumbs and your scraps and make such a beautiful quilt and here is my gorgeous bedspread it's so beauty it took 1332 three and a half inch blocks with crumbs to make this quilt and i really do love the peaceful feeling it has and the way it turned out this is such a great way to use scraps so i hope that you get your scraps out and start playing and see if this is a block that you would like to have in your repertoire stay merry and creative